Hello, welcome back to Our Heritage Works. Today, we are going to repair a touch lamp. As you can see, this touch lamp is not working. Like always, we want to make sure we are doing safety first, and so we are ensuring that the lamp is unplugged. The next thing we need to do is to remove all the glass from the lamp shade. To do this, we unscrew the knob on the top, remove the uh, outer casing, and then carefully remove each piece of the lamp glass. The glass is held in by this extra piece on top and two tabs at the bottom that the glass sits in. So we carefully remove this top piece to expose the top of the glass, and then we'll just lift out each glass piece and set it aside. While we have the pieces of glass out, we will make sure that they are thoroughly cleaned before we put them back in. We'll also uh, clean up the different parts of the lamp while we have it apart. Uh, this gives us a good chance to reach every little nook and cranny. So we'll do that before we put things back together. If you're liking this content, please hit the like button and then hit subscribe so you can see more of it. Turn on that notification bell so you'll know exactly when uh, we post a new video. Once we remove the frame of the shade, we can take the pipe off the center shaft it's there to make things look good. It's hiding the tube where the power goes and holds the shade. Uh, the next thing we'll need to do is turn it over and look at the base and try to figure out how to get this off. I initially thought that this would twist and so I was sitting here trying to twist it one way or the other and it wasn't twisting. So I figured out that it's gonna have to be pried apart and from the little piece that I have open, I can see all I have to do is uh, pry some tabs down so that they unhook from the base. I am being careful here so that I am not breaking anything. I'm just pushing the plastic of the base away from the brass part so that way it'll pop right through. When we turn the base over, we can see inside, we have this little control module and the wires for the lamp. The wires themselves look really good, so I'm sure that it's not that. So it has to be the control module. We'll order one and then uh, replace the one that's there. To make it easier, I'm gonna remove this shaft and then I can just turn the lamp over and it'll stay steady for me. Now that I have the new module, I take a really good look at the wiring and how it's supposed to be. Um, so I've cut out the old module and I have a diagram of how to rewire it. So we're going to go from the plug side with a black wire. From the module, it's going to go through the black wire. It's shown as red on the diagram up to the lamp. Now we have three black wires because there are um, three different lights in here. From the um, yellow wire from the module, it's gonna attach to the base. Um, there's an existing wire there. So rather than trying to untwist that, I'm gonna just connect it to the uh, existing wire and then all of the whites will be joined together. So we go from the plug to the module through the black wires, from the red wire from the module to the black wire of the lamp, from the lamp we're going to connect all of the white wires which take us back to the power cord and completing the circuit. This lamp is polarized. You know that by looking at the plug itself. One side is larger than the other, and that larger side is uh, the neutral wire, 
And you can tell this because it'll be ribbed or it might have a white stripe or something like that on it. But the rib side is the larger wire and it goes to the white. The smooth side of the cord uh, is the hot wire and it will go to the black side. So the white is ribbed and is the larger side. The smaller side of the bug is the hot wire and it is smooth and goes to the black. To install the new module, I cut away uh, all of the old wires, make sure that I have uh, clean ends to work with. I will use my wire strippers to pull back just a little bit of the coating on the outside of the wires. On the black and the white wires, I'm going to strip back just a little bit more than I do otherwise because I've got so many of them coming together in one place. But all three of the black, all three of the white are going to have to be connected together. So I make those just a little longer so they have enough room to work with them. While I'm stripping these wires, I wanted to say thank you to everyone watching and the leaves a comment, shares this with others. It helps the algorithm send people to our channel. So if you're really liking this, um, subscribe, share, comment, and all those things really help us out. Thanks. Once I have all the wires stripped, I'm going to make sure I've got plenty of room to work with the wires and uh, give them just a little bit of a twist just to make sure that they're staying together. Uh, these are made up of a bunch of little wires on the inside and I'm just trying to keep them together. Now that I've got all the wires in the lamp ready, I'm pulling just the ends off of these wires from the module, and I'm going to have to cut off the end of the yellow wire. It is uh, designed so that it could be put around the nut that you see right in the center of the lamp, but I'm using the existing wire, so I need to uh, strip this, and then I'll be able to twist it onto the existing wire that's already there. Initially, I thought I would use these uh, newer um, connectors for wires, but what I found was they were awful loose and really hard to make a good uh, physical connection on both sides. And I really didn't like how it was feeling. So ultimately, I decided to abandon those particular uh, connectors and I'm going to use the traditional wire nuts and just twist them together. They make another kind where there's a little tab on the side that you pull up and then you insert the wire and push the tab back down. Um, those would have been just fine to use. I think I would have gotten really good connections with those, but I was really struggling to get this particular brand in there. As you can see there, I tried to pull it apart just to test the strength of it, and it just did not meet my standards. So I opted not to go that route. And here I'm starting with the yellow wire. I'm going to twist it together, and then I'll put a nut on it, uh, which came with the control module. I didn't have to get these separately and I want to make sure that I've got a good physical connection between them. So following the diagram, I connected the yellow from the module to the yellow wire of the lamp. Now I'm taking the red wire from the module and connecting it to the black of the lamp. Remember, I mentioned earlier that the black wire um, 
from the lamp is labeled red on the diagram. Uh, we know that it's the correct wires because it only has uh, black, white, and yellow. The white and yellow, we know that we're going to match those up. So the only thing left for the red wire to go to is the black. The idea between the red and black wires on the module is that is our switch. So if you think about it, the current's going to go from the plug to the module and then continue out the red wire into the black wire. If we didn't have the module, it would go straight from the black wire all the way through and it wouldn't have any issues. So I'm making sure that I am there's a good physical connection. So I'm twisting all of the uh, wires together first and then I'm applying the uh, nut on top of it. If you don't have a good physical connection first, there's a chance that things could pull apart. So I'm just making sure that I'm twisting all these white wires together. And I've got four of them. Uh, I've got three for the three different bulbs in the lamp. I've got the white wire from the module. And I've got the power cord to all put together in this one bundle. So it was a little tight, but I did get it. Make sure that you are um, checking for the smooth and rib side of the power cord. And here I'm doing the black wire, uh, the smooth side of the power cord, and then this should complete our circuit. Now that we've completed our circuit, we want to take a really good look to verify that we've done everything correctly. Using your diagram that came with the module, I'm just double checking to make sure I've got everything correct. And it appears that I've done everything correct, so the lamp should work at this point. Now that we've completed the wiring, I'm going to flip the lamp over and very, very carefully, I'm going to plug it in or add the bulbs, then plug it in, safety first. And then I'm going to uh, test just to make sure everything's working before I put it completely back together. And as you can see, the lamp works. We can now start to reassemble the lamp. We unplug it for safety, remove the bulbs. These bulbs are LED bulbs, uh, so they should last a really long time. The next thing that we need to do is secure the new module to the inside of the base. This is more just so it's not flopping around or anything like that. I've got a little bit of foam double sticky tape and I'm just going to put it on the inside and attach the module to it. And the base just snaps back on. Uh, since we were careful on taking it off, all we have to do is snap it back into place. Now we can reverse the process. Um, we'll put the rod in that holds up the lampshade, tighten it down so it's been tight. And then uh, you'll notice I'm just using a wrench just to make sure that it's as tight as possible. I don't want to over torque it just enough to get it snug. And we can add the decorative tubing back to the lamp now.
The next thing we need to do is to reassemble the lampshade. Um, this is a little difficult to hold everything together, but all we do is slide the glass down into the tabs that are there. And while holding that in place, we'll go on to the next piece, hold those in. Ultimately, we'll put the cap on top and then screw the, the lid down. Now we can reinstall the bulbs and we can then test the lamp to make sure that we didn't break anything while we were putting it back together. The module that I got was about 10 bucks off of Amazon and so I hope that you'd be willing to give this a try if you've got a touch lamp that goes out. You can see that it Instead of getting rid of the lamp, it is good to just redo the lamp you have and make it useful. I hope you'll give this a try. Thank you.